Eelbrews, how you doing? Well, it's really cold down here tonight, um, but I'm not going to be down here long, so I've decided not to put the heater on. I just thought I'd just make this video and race upstairs, so I've got my scarf on um, to keep me a bit warm. So it's so nice this time of year that you can start wearing scarves and coats and jackets and rug up. Um, great time of year. Anyway, um, there's this guy, Aaron Marino, who I follow on YouTube. He's got a channel, Alpha M Image, Image Consulting, and basically he gives tips on he gives tips to guys on fashion sense. Um, he shows you all the different types of clothes, styles, what's trendy, what works, what doesn't, um, and he's just a really nice guy. Anyway, um, I've been following him for quite a while now, and um, I've been uh, commenting on his videos and stuff, and he's he's got such a great sense of humour. Um, it really, it's really funny. Um, anyway, I um, sent him a message today saying, you know, hey Aaron, can I was wondering if you'd be interested in letting me do a portrait uh, picture of you because, you know, I've done a couple in the past. I've done Amanda Light and Jared Knight, who are also YouTubers, and, you know, I like to occasionally do them. And you know how I do, I, use, I create a stencil and then I create layers and mix it up and create a series of four or five little little portraits and then they get to choose the ones they want and I send them and I keep one for myself. Anyway, I got a reply back pretty pretty quick actually and he was like, yeah man, that'd be really cool. Well, sorry, I'm not, I'm just paraphrasing it, but <laughs> you know what I mean? He was like really excited and happy that um, I was going to do it. But anyway, the reason I chose Aaron is because I really like his face. He's got a real masculine He's just got a good looking face, <laughs> basically. Um, and that sort of had me thinking about this book, Francis ba Interviews with Francis Bacon, because Francis Bacon liked to do portraits of people of good looking people as well. Um, and I'm going to read a little bit about it, because I thought it's just interesting how artists think. Um, Alright, so I'm picking up, oh, my bookmarks. Are just spines of old books I just rip off and flatten out. They make great bookmarks. Um, okay. Okay. So he's being, Francis Bacon is being interviewed by uh, David Sylvester. So David says, You've painted a great many self portraits lately, haven't you? Many more than before, Francis. I've done a lot of self-portraits, really because people have been dying around me like flies and I've had nobody else left to paint but myself. Well, now I'm glad to say that, that two people, very good looking, have turned up, both of whom I've known in the past. They're both very good subjects. I loathe my own face and I've done self-portraits because I've had no one else to do, but now I shall give up doing self-portraits. David says, uh, you don't like uh, to go on painting portraits of people after they're dead, Francis. It seems a bit mad painting portraits of dead people. After all, you know that if they haven't been, uh, what's it called, incinerated, they've uh, rotted away. Their flesh has rotted away. And once they're dead, you have a memory of them, but you don't have them. I'm against incineration because I think that in thousands of years' time, if the world exists at all, it will be a bore if there's nobody to dig up. <laughs> that was quite funny. David, when you're painting a portrait, are you at all conscious of trying to say something about your feelings in regard to the model or about what the model might be feeling? Or are you only thinking about their appearance? Francis, every form that you make has an implication so that when you're painting somebody, you know that you are, of course, trying to get near not only to their appearance but also to the way they have affected you because every shape has an implication. David says, an emotional implication, yes. Um, <clears throat> in painting self-portraits, is there a radical difference in approach from the one used when painting other people? Francis, no, except that I like painting good-looking people. Because I like good bone structure. I loathe my own face. 
I go on painting it only because I haven't got any other people to do. It's true to say, one of the nicest things that um, Kotia said, said was, each day in the mirror I watch death at work. This is what one does, oneself. David says, at what age did you come to realise that death was going to happen to you? Francis, I realised when I was 17. I remember it very, very clearly. I remember looking at a dog shit on the pavement and I suddenly realised, there it is. This is what life is like. Strangely enough, it tormented me for months till I came to, as it were, accept that here you are, existing for a second, brushed off like flies on the wall. Um, yeah, <laughs> such an interesting read. This book is amazing. I rec really recommend it if you guys want an interesting read about someone fascinating. Interviews with Francis Bacon. But anyway, yeah. So this week I've been working on a few projects. Um, I, as you know, from a couple of videos before, I've been experimenting with encaustic art. And the other day I received my Damara resin uh, that I've been waiting for from uh, Mo. Mo Godbeer. Godbeer. And, um, yeah. This is my first encaustic sculpture. It's not finished. I've still got some carving to do, but um, I'm quite happy with it, with how it's turned out. And it's part metal, part encaustic wax. Um, I was sort of the inspiration came from the picture plant, uh, which is like a tropical plant that lives in the rainforest and. Basically, it, it eats insects, like it has liquid that's in the bottom and insects are attracted to the sweet liquid and they fall in and they fall in the bottom and then the acid in the bottom dissolves them and, and that. And they're really pretty and they, become, they come in various colours and combinations and, you know, there's such a diversity in the, uh, in the picture family. And yeah, well, because I grew up in North Queensland, Australia, where it is quite tropical, um, you know, I saw quite a few of them, so that's where the inspiration for that came from. But really interesting uh, process it was to get it to this stage. There's actually 13 layers of wax, of different coloured waxes that I've built up to create it. Um, then I basically, yeah, put it together. So, happy with that one. I've run out of wax now. I only had a little bit that I ordered. Um, but I'm, I'm hooked now, so... I want to actually set up a proper section in the studio here for me to do encaustic and um, really get into doing lots of different stuff. Now I think, um, for me, I love doing sculptures in encaustic. I've done a couple of paintings, as you saw in a previous video, um, but for me I really get excited, um, yeah, sexually aroused. No, <laughs> it looks a bit sexual, doesn't it? No, that's wrong. <laughs> um, yeah, I really get ex excited um, with creating sculptures in encaustic. So that's what I'm going to continue to do. Oh my giddy up! Trends, what suits, what type of body type, um, just lots of really cool tips and information. Ow, I fucking bit my tongue. without any makeup on, you think I'm funny. When I tell the punchline wrong, I know you get me. So I let my walls come down. Let's fall in to each other's arms. No 